Let's go put this motherboard in and drop Rebecca off. Rebecca a little bit. I don't know if they if this was intentional. Do you guys know the comic book character Squirrel Girl? She's like um, this Marvel character that, uh, <laughs> that a lot of people, or not a lot of people, but there is a group of people that seem to like her. Uh, I kind of liked the first run a little bit. I thought it was a it was a funny, goofy parody on superhero kind of idea. Uh, and I haven't really kept up with the character since. Uh, just that hasn't looked interesting to me. Uh, but uh, I think it was the girl, She's I don't know if she's from the Verizon or AT&T commercials, that really pretty girl with brown hair uh, from like a couple years back. She's... Um, She's gonna play Squirrel Girl in a, in like the TV show The New Warriors, and, which is interesting that they're including her in The New Warriors. But uh, but kind of could be fun to add a lot of humor. Um, but Rebecca kind of reminds me of Squirrel Girl. Like she's like this cute little 19 year old smart and capable human being uh, that. I guess <laughs> people don't like. <laughs> uh, I like Rebecca. Uh, I like her even more when she's next to Billy Cohen because Billy Cohen is such a terrible character. Um, but I liked her in the first Resident Evil 2. I, I, the thing about Resident Evil 1 that I like so much is the characters. I like uh, Barry, Wesker, Jill, Chris, and Rebecca. I, I like them. They're, they're not a lot to their characters in the game uh, as far as like learning who they are personality-wise and where they come from and their backgrounds. Like, there's none of, not a ton of that in it. But you see what kind of people they are through their actions. And mainly that's because you're the one playing the game through their actions. So you imprint a lot of you onto them. And so, uh, so I, for that reason, I'm just like, I just dig the crap out of, uh, of those characters in the first game. I imprinted myself onto all of them in a way, uh, even though you don't get to play as some of them. Hashtag full nog. I love Squirrel Girl. So funny. Yeah, she's she's a pretty funny character. Um, so I'm looking forward to seeing her being, you know, joining the, I guess, the New Warriors TV show. Ah, uh, yes. Here we go. Red chemical mixed with the blue. And we have sulfuric acid. Finally. Industrial water. So this is what we're going to mix combine with that now we have the battery fluid and then now we just need Billy let's switch to Billy I think we with Billy we just go downstairs and then out that door that we didn't go out when we were fighting the tyrant fighting the tyrant. I said, I should say when we killed the tyrant, because it was just like th three rockets or four rockets into him, and he was done. He was done so. These enemies I hate, literally because they only pop up pretty much right here, and they're stupid. Um, it's, it's, a, it's, a, this game is like one of the things that I understand, like testing on animals and stuff it is kind of like an underlying, really hidden underlying thing of this game. But there's like this, uh, this thing that irritates me about this game, which is like, they're just like, oh, we, we can't do the monsters from the other Resident Evil games. So we have to, or like not all of them. We could do the hunters because we've already established in the lore that, uh, that you could have the hunters. Um, in previous incarnations or prequel storylines. Uh, but you can't have things like liquors or or um, ivy plant creatures because that's exclusive to the mansion. Uh, or not ivies. Ivies were in Resident Evil 2, but the uh, the plant creature. It's like that's exclusive to, you know, to, to the mansion. Um, plant 42. So there's just like, there's all these like things like uh, that that are a little... Um, irritating that they, these like walls that they put on themselves so for me i was just like well, why didn't you just make this game zombies and leeches uh like i don't understand why that was an issue why did you have to have giant cockroaches and a giant centipede and a giant bat like all of that just seems really r ridiculous <laughs> but 
but this is this is a prime example where like the story didn't come first like Resident Evil and again it's probably because the story had to change so many times from the 64 version to this version but they probably just got to the point where they're just like just finish the game like just put enemies in there put this giant grasshopper in there like whatever just get it done and then they try to excuse it by saying like oh well these are all like early tests animals and subjects of of the T-Virus. Oh, we wanted to see what the T-Virus did to a monkey and a frog. And and it's like, but we 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 kind of know because you kind of mix frog and reptile DNA into the hunters and then mix those with like, you know, something, you know, like a human or something like that. Like the, the hunter's an amalgam of things like that. So we already know that answer. So they're like, well, these are our prototypes. And it's like, but, but why? <laughs> Um, all right, so now we have the battery, so we mix that with this. We have a full battery now, and now we have to run back to um, use it on a forklift just to raise up to get a key card, which she could have just had Billy Cohen lift her up and get the key card. And again, it's one of those where I would like to hear uh, to hear Grifter's backstory on how this key card got on top of this forklift box or on top of this rock that you have to like ride a forklift up to grab <laughs> when we get there griff i want i want to hear your backstory on that um mm, chicken and dumplings nobody tests viruses on bugs no i know that but that's the other thing too it's like the monkey thing i'm like okay if you want to make a monkey monster fine make a monkey monster like all right you tested it on a, on a monkey i i can kind of wrap my head around that um, but yeah, no, what you're, yeah, it's like, oh, we're going to test on this grasshopper. It's like, but why? <laughs> why, why, why do you need to test on the grasshopper? And, and why did it, and then that's the thing is the, we talked about this the last time we played this, where I, where I made fun of this game, where it was just like, oh, we're going to just make big everything. Like, oh, it's, it's a big, it, it's a big cockroach. Uh, oh, okay. It's a big centipede. Um, oh, okay. It's a big um, monkey, <laughs> like an enlarged monkey, um, or a big bat. I'm sorry. Yeah, the monkeys are average size, but yeah. Come on. Okay. It's yeah. It's just like this back and forth of uh, oh, we're just that's what makes them monsters. They're big versions. It's like, but why would the T virus grow a frog into a giant frog? Like, is that one of the effects of it? Like, you, I just kind of shake my head and go, I don't understand. <laughs> um, I think there, I mean, there is some testing on bugs, but it's, it's usually testing bugs for things, you know, it's like, uh, it, it's not, it's not so much, um, like, oh, let's infect this bug with this virus to see what it does. I'm sure there's on some level, there's something like that, but it's, it's mostly like, cause I, what was I reading about? And, and it's a lot of it's in fictional science. It's, so it's not a lot of it's real science, but, um, I was reading because I've been doing a lot of stuff on research on venom and stuff like for the for the show. I mean, I know a lot about venom already, but there was like little details that I had forgot over the years of, you know, not rereading the comics. And there was something in this book called Spider-Man, the Ar Arachnus Project. And it was basically like um, it was this uh, Carlton Drake, who's the villain, uh, the villain in the Venom movie, as we've learned recently, played by R Riz Ahmed. Um, Carlton Drake is a. Uh, Oh, he's like trying to cure cancer by looking at arachnoid cells and how arachnoids are impervious to certain ailments that would affect humans. Obviously, I don't know. It's something like that. And I was like reading it and I'm like, well, this is obviously fake science, but it's interesting. And I wonder if anyone's ever actually pursued something weird like that. Um, but uh, that's why pretty much all the giant bug stuff is radioactive or toxic waste. Yeah, that's exactly it. I mean, that's to me, I'm like, oh, if they would have explained it that way, that would make a lot more sense to me. Like if they were like, oh, uh, we were experimenting on other things other than the T virus and and it got, you know, and it was like, you know, it was something toxic and a grasshopper or grasshoppers and frogs fell into it because we're underground and they're just here and they, you know, they, they, you know, they ended up 
into getting into the toxic stuff and it made them grow you know that could have been something but again for me for this game I, all i really needed was zombies and uh, the leech monster if you wanted to make a new monster right? you didn't really need the prototype tyrant or anything like that or giant monkeys or bats so here you go the forklift check over there. up there on the rock there's a shiny thing why anyone would even be bothered to look up that way there's no establishing shot showing Rebecca notice it or see it and it's it's at a such an angle that it's not accidental a card is flat it's if it's gonna slide down rocks it's gonna slide all the way to the bottom so that's clearly intentionally put there so grifter what is the backstory <laughs> Uh, and this is the way to get it. So someone rode this up, put the card there, and rode it back down and was like, ha, that thing is safe. Now no one can get into the next room. <laughs> it's like, but why? This way. Why prevent people from going into the next room? And why do it like that? Um, we're too biologically uh, dissimilar for testing stuff on them to be useful. Oh, exactly. Like, for you to be useful for humans. You're right. If there's any kind of bug testing, it's it's something to benefit or understand bugs more um, for what they are. Typically. Yeah, that makes sense to me. I'm totally not a science major or anything. I know, I know, I know about fictional science and how to write fictional science sometimes. Uh, that's about, that's my extent of things. Um, my knowledge of science. Uh, I failed every science class I think I've ever taken, uh, one of which failed so bad it held me back a grade uh, for one whole year. So yeah, I, I'm i not the person to ask regarding that stuff. So there was a shortcut. I totally... I remember there being one, and I, t I totally blanked on how to do it. So, yeah, it was this room. I unlocked that door. Thank goodness I unlocked it, because we ended up coming through there. Um, yeah, now I feel like an idiot. Uh, there's something called biomimicry, biomedics, uh, biomimetics uh, that is similar. applies patterns in nature to fix human problems. Well, first of all, it was take your kid to work day, and that's all I have off the top of my head <laughs> for how that card got up there. <laughs> oh, so you're you're positing that uh, that it was a bring your kid to work day, and some some asshole kid took their dad's key card and or mom's key card and put it up on that rock uh, <laughs> to hide it from them, uh, so that their mom or dad couldn't um, work anymore and had to play with them. <laughs> You know what? I accept it. I completely accept your hypothesis. That's pretty good. Off the top of your head, that's pretty good. Um, Biomimetics, though, and biomimicry. Uh, yeah, because I want to say I, there's something about that in... Um, what's that Guillermo del Toro movie? Mimic? Is, is that what it's called? Mimic? Um, I like that movie. I want to say there was something... They Again, I didn't know if it was fake science or real science or... It led to real science because that's the thing. A lot of times science fiction gives someone who's into it the idea to test it and try to prove it in real life. Um, but yeah, was it Mimic? I think that was the name of that movie. They talked about how these bugs evolved and stuff and became humanoid and some, I don't know, something like that. Um, science nerd about specific shit, Jamily says about herself. Biomimetics is a different thing, though. Well than mimic the movie or than biomimicry you are the guests of honor after all it's your wake <laughs> or different in the sense that it's not to benefit humans because i f i feel like that could be that's probably true i i don't like you said no. there were too dissimilar what's going on plot twist the guy in the robe years ago, is Spencer actually james marcus I also don't like this origin because it's too much. It's too similar to Resident Evil Two. Time to die, Doctor. I will 
take over your research. And these guys are are so look he's laughing like they're so over the top villains and I never took Wesker for that. Um, in the first Resident Evil game, he seemed like a practical guy. He seemed like someone who was like, "All right, I work for this company. They're they're not interested in my best interests. However, they are. Something they are. Um, I am working for a guy who is too weak to do what is necessary to really make change in this world. I'm going to sell all their research to somebody, make a lot of money that will fund my ultimate goals, and and." Uh, and get that research in the hands of someone who will pull the trigger on change. I, I always kind of understood him as, and I don't mean that as, that doesn't sound practical, it sounds like a nut job's point of view, but it's one you can kind of wrap your head around. And it doesn't seem over the top in a way. Um, it seems like someone who has like a five year plan, I guess, of evil. And in this one, it's like, oh, look, they're cartoony villains. They're, ha. I'm going to take over your research. Ha, 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 ha. And it's like, whatever. Uh, Birkin dies the same way in Resident Evil 2, uh, which is a game that I wish we could play on this stream. We will because we're remaking it. So eventually we'll play it on this stream because they don't have it back. It's, it's not like an Xbox. It's, it's, it's PlayStation. Uh, you can buy it on PlayStation Store, the PS1 version, but yeah. Uh, unable to play on this stream. So yeah, like 10 years ago, Marcus was betrayed by Umbrella. They didn't like that he continued his research on leeches uh, because he was thinking the ultimate goal of Umbrella, at least Oswald e. Spencer's goal, was always to uh, f eternal human life. And like any bad guy, he he's, knows his days are numbered because he's aging and uh, and he wants to live for you know, a longer, longer period of time. So they believe that this plant that doesn't need sunlight to survive might hold the key to something that we can replicate somehow to help humans stay alive. And then they, from that, they extracted the progenitor virus and they learned that that was able to revive dead cells and they hoped to, um, you know, make that into something that could, uh, you know, so it's just stages. It's just constant stages. Um, come on, Rebecca, get with the program. Oh, I got us. We got to switch spots. So it shows stages. So, um, and so the stages they were moving on to was T virus, G virus. Those are the stages that William Birkin and Wesker wanted to go. And, uh, and though, and Marcus did not want to go that route. He wanted to continue the search on le leeches. He believed that's where they were going to find their answers. Um, and, uh, yeah, and it he ended up getting betrayed. The company was like, hey, we're funding this. If you're not going to do what we say, we're going to – we can't shut you down. We've tried to cut your funding. You're now just taking people and using them as your test subjects. We're going to we're gonna kill you before you get us all busted and, and caught. So he was like a loose end. And I kind of like that part of his story, but it's not played up in like a more serious approach. It's, it's, it's more goofy and like I said, over the top. So I guess we don't need that grapple hook anymore. I think it's optional. We could have used it, I think maybe one more time somewhere, but uh, I don't think we have to. Oh, we can't, dang it. We're actually going to give this to, because Rebecca, for the next portion of this, she's not even going to be playing. Like, she's going to be trying to, uh, like, I don't know, she's not, she's not even going to be, like, a, you know, shooting at the bad guy. Like, they leave that all up to Billy for the end, so... You wouldn't test viruses on them to use mimicry. Uh, you see how they deal with stuff and then they try to mimic it with technology. Really useful and interesting, but Umbrella doesn't get top use for it for an excuse. Oh, I know exactly, right? Um, uh, John Lee says, more like textile and structural applications uh, with mimicry and bi oh, biomimetics and stuff. Oh, gotcha, okay. Um, but uh, Grifter says... Uh, or John Lee says, uh, I mean, with that attitude, <laughs> uh, 
commenting on Grifter saying really useful and interesting, but Umbrella doesn't get top use for it as an excuse. And John says, yeah, but not with that attitude. <laughs> yeah, there's a, there's a lot to Umbrella that I I, th I think is is interesting in a way and, and could make for good good storytelling and stuff. And I think they do it in some cases and in some cases they don't. And it's just that simple. Uh, this game is one of them where I'm just like, I kind of just, ugh, I kind of cringe in a way. Yeah, I can't leave stuff anywhere. This is really frustrating. Let's give, oh, he's already got two health sprays. He's got three health sprays. All right, he's going to need them because, uh, yeah, cool. I'm gonna, let's see. Still can't leave that. Let's go into the next room. Sorry, I'm gonna, I'm probably gonna edit all this out anyway, so it doesn't matter. Let's go drop some stuff off in this room because we don't need any of this shit. Remember last night when I said, oh, I'm gonna stop because I think we, you know, we're, we're still like two hours away from the ending. Yeah, we were only an hour and 10 minutes. I mean, we, we would have got here faster if I didn't get lost at that one point. Um, and if we weren't backtracking so much. All right. So we'll go back in here, we'll get the herbs, um, and uh, we'll save. And then we're at the end of the game. <laughs> it's like, like we're right at the end here. I think we have to keep one slot open for Billy and uh, Rebecca, I think, because I think they have to grab stuff upstairs. So we'll we'll do that. We'll leave, because I was like, oh, maybe I can grab, go in the other room and grab more uh, health stuff, but nah, we're good. A Beck, Rebecca, equip the grenade launcher. Billy, equip the magnum. Yep, so we need one slot for the ink ribbon at least. And this isn't bad. I mean, we did it in like seven saves, like for having not played, or six saves. For not having played this in a while, that's not bad. When did we play this last? Like, did we play that? I think we played this in zombie month in January of this year. I think we played Wesker mode. And I think we beat the game in like five, four hours, five hours, something like that. Uh, because with Wesker and his superpowers, like we just breeze through some of this game. Uh, we did breeze through this too with the unlimited ammo, but we just had a lot more fun doing it with Wesker. All right. Activate the lift. We, pro I think we talked about it, um, in a, in a previous stream where, uh, this lift here, if I have the original scripts, and I can't remember, I printed it out, it's in my closet somewhere, of the Paul Anderson Resident Evil movie. I have the the um, the George Romero what? script, and I have the Paul Anderson the one. Queen. And the ending of the Paul Anderson one actually had a similar ending to this, where the lift was like a diagonal up thing. Um, it actually tied a little bit more into like the look of the the way it was described. But of course they went to Germany to film the first Resident Evil. So they looked at the setting of what they had to use. And there was like some, there was an underground tram station that they shot some of the movie Equilibrium in with Christian Bale. And they were like, Hey, we'll let you use this station for like next to nothing. And so they were like, all right. So the setting of the script completely changed because they had this underground tram and they're like, Hey, there's a tram in Resident Evil too. So we'll just doll it up a little bit, make it look like that tram and it'll be fine. But originally they had it to where, it was a di diagonal uh, thing like this uh, that was um, that was like leading leading them to the underground lab, and uh, I was like, "Oh, that's neat! Like that's 
it just needs to read like what could have been. Uh, but obviously that movie had, I think Resident Evil 1, the movie had a $40 million budget. Uh, which doesn't sound like much nowadays. It wasn't too much then either, because that was only like 15 years ago, but... But still. Um, it would have been, uh, it would have been neat to see the original version of Resident Evil movie. And it would have been interesting to see the Romero version too, just because he had Chris and Jill and... and and like a uh, Forrest Spayer and Wesker, he had them all in it. It was, it was, uh, he just changed, he made weird changes. He made Chris Redfield like Native American, um, and, uh, and, and Chris was like, uh, like this falconeer who like <laughs> talked to birds and stuff, um, talked to falcons, obviously. It was just, I don't know, it was just he, he changed things oddly, um, and he made Chris and Jill boyfriend and girlfriend, which, I don't know, if there's a love story there, I feel like it should play out over the course of several storylines, because every time you interact with those characters in the games, the the situations are always extreme. Um, you know, their, their lives are on the line, uh, and there's a virus getting out. Wow, this thing's really pissed at me. Nice. Well, we're holding them off. Two down. Probably not enough faith in it for more than 40 minutes. Yeah, I guess probably not. Dang it. No. Why are you aiming? I'm bringing it right to Rebecca. That's dumb of me. There we go. Get it away from Rebecca. Ooh. And then them here, like, learning about its weakness for the sun. It's, it's weird, too, because that seems to come out of nowhere, almost. Um... It almost comes out of nowhere. It's just like, oh, look, it has a weakness. Um, again, it would have been interesting to set it up, to tie it into the lore. Hey, you know this plant that the progenitor virus comes from that we mix with the leeches? It didn't need sun to survive. So sun, you know, could hurt it, could harm it. They could talk about how they, they actually put the flower in sunlight to see what would change with the flower, you know, chemically or whatever. And they could be like, oh, we learned that, you know, the sunlight actually killed this plant. It learned how to evolve and survive so long without sunlight that by putting it in the sun, it hurt it. So it's like, that would have been an interesting setup to the weakness of the leech. It's like, everything's there. And the dots just don't connect in the game. And I think that's because they had to revise this so many times to go from the 64 version to the, the GameCube version. So things were probably just lost as new teams and new people came on to work on it. But yeah, that's my that's my Resident Evil rant for this game. Uh, has all the elements for a good story. Uh, doesn't deliver on most of them. Hey, Queenie, feast on this. I do like that shot though of him planting his feet, because this Magnum would have a kick and a half to it, even for a big guy like him. Explosions. I like how the trees were like swaying from the destruction. That's pretty badass. It 
and I get that. Like the the other story they kind of crammed in here too was like this. Like, uh, okay, Rebecca, it's her it's her first day. It's her first assignment, um, and she comes across someone who is is apparently wanted, and they they come across. It. The, the thing is, they didn't even know about Billy Cohen's existence before they go into the woods. So it's so arbitrary and random that they come across a car that like, and they found his file, and they're like, oh, he killed twenty seven people. I'm gonna go find him. And they're like, okay, maybe he's the killer who is like responsible for all these dead bodies that have been showing up. But how, but they don't ask how long the convoy's been there. It doesn't look like it's been there for a week or two weeks or however yeah, long the murders have been going on. Um, like they're, they're, again, there's set up there for real connection to this. Um, Cause I always like those stories like Predator. We talked about how Resident Evil reminds me of Predator. They're going in to help like this dispute in this like this region, this other country, and they're look and they're in this region, this foreign region, and uh, there's warlords and and things, you know, all these things going on, villagers being attacked, and um, and then that's their mission. They go in and and turns out that something alien is in the woods, something from another world, and that's what Res Evil feels like to me. Oh, we're investigating these murders that could be by either a group of cannibals, one guy, it's just like a psychotic serial killer, whatever. And, uh, and then it turns out to be this, this secret facility doing test subjects on people and, and animals and creating monsters. And it's like, there's like a really interesting escalation there. And that's what Res Evil always had for me with the first game. And then even in the second one, it's a cop coming to Raccoon City to, uh, on his first day on the job. And within the past 48 hours, he had no idea because he's, you know, just coming here to like, I think they even said in the book, he had already moved all of his stuff, but he wanted to bring his, he wanted to drive his motorcycle into town. So he like what Leon was there for like a couple days and then left, got his motorcycle and was coming back with just like the last of his gear. And then was like, Oh wait, I'm, I'm late coming in because of like a storm that happened. Like, you know, the night earlier and he was like holed up in a motel and he was like, all right, I got to change in my police outfit and I pretty much got to go right into work and work the night shift. Um, and when he shows up in raccoon, you know, he's like, Oh crap, it's in the middle of a zombie apocalypse. And then you have Claire who's just going to find her brother. Simple story again. Oh, I'm just going to go find my brother. And then, Oh wow. He's been keeping these secrets from me that there's, he's been involved with a secret organization. He hasn't contacted me in three months because he didn't want Umbrella to think I knew anything because then they'd come after me. And now I, I have to escape this city and go find him. And so things escalate in, like in this really natural way. And this game, it, it, it set it up like that. Like, oh, we're here to look for a killer. And we find this random convoy and it gives us this random bit of information. And then we're just going to say oh this must be our killer even though the convoy looked like it only crashed like an hour prior um and then it's like oh here's a train and then oh the train starts up and it's like it escalates but not in this like it in this almost discombobulated way for me where it doesn't seem like one thing naturally flows in the other it seems like forced 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 okay now we're on the train now we can start telling the story we can get to the thing so it's calming down now and it, now it's starting to feel more organic and then force 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 like you know in the third and fourth, you know, acts of the storyline. Um, pretty sure you shot him way more times than that. <laughs> oh yeah. I think we unloaded on that thing for sure. All right, let's check out our, our completion time. And everyone who tuned in today later, thanks so much. Definitely come and check us out live on Twitch at some point. I know I haven't been streaming a lot lately, but I definitely will um, as we get through the holidays and I finish up my busy schedule because I skipped it probably. I was hoping it would tell us about our, our you know, play time and how many times we saved, how many times we died, whatever. Uh, no deaths. I'm, I'm pretty happy with myself. No deaths. Because even I will die on easy mode at times. But unlimited ammo and kind of knew what I was doing, so that's fine. Uh, but if you're watching later, thank you so much for the support. I appreciate it greatly. Like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff, and I'll see you in the future. Peace.